Hello and welcome to the Knitting Traditions podcast. My name is Inga and this is my little corner on the internet where I talk about my knitting. If you're a returning viewer, welcome back. If you are new here, um, I'm Inga and I am a doctor living on the west coast of Norway and in my spare time I knit. It's uh, a passion of mine, it's what I love to do. I was taught by my grandmother when I was a child, hence the Knitting Traditions name. And she was taught by her mother and grandmother and so on. So we've been knitters for generations. And um, what I like to knit is a little bit of everything. I will knit what makes me happy and I hope you do the same. I like a little bit of color work, I like some traditional color work, I like textured knits, I like basic knits, bigger projects, smaller projects, and I usually have several going at a time. I always have several going at a time. When I learned to knit as a child, um, I did knit from patterns, my grandmother taught me techniques and I freestyled, and I still like to freestyle a lot of knits, I find it very freeing to be able to do so. Uh, but when I started learning to knit from patterns when I was in medical school, like many years ago now, <laughs> um, I would knit one thing at a time. But now I have lots of things going. I want something to keep me busy, something more mindful. I like to have something very simple. I like to have portable projects. I like to have couch projects. So. You'll see a little bit of several of those categories in today's episode. Um, and yeah, let's get into it. If you do like this content, please feel free to give a thumbs up, comment, subscribe if you want to see more. I read all the comments and they honestly make my day. It's, it's why I continue doing this. The online community of knitters is, well, it has to be the best community and I find it very different from um, the local knitting community, which uh, is more of a one person kind of thing, but the online one is so welcoming and open and people love to share their joy of knitting. And um, I think that's a really good quality. So what I am wearing, I'm getting really warm because I was just on a hike <laughs> in my little neighborhood. I was trying to scout where I can walk with Nelly when she's born. So I was out on a hike. It's the probably last sunny day of fall. I know I'm digressing now, but <laughs> it's like the last day of sunny fall here. We usually have rain, but we've had a whole week of sun now because it's been minus four. So usually the minus degrees goes hand in hand with a few days of sun, um, but it's going to go back to the gloomy days now. So I went on a hike. I wore my watch cap hat. I've made so many of these. This I made in a yarn that I got from Knit Crate when that still existed. I am missing those monthly subscriptions. It's a white blend of fiber. I find that this one has a tendency to stretch quite a bit and it doesn't um, immediately bounce back into shape. So it's looking a bit wonky because I'm I had a different kind of fold going on, so I think I need to make another white watch cap hat in the future in a more woolly yarn. I was also wearing my Huldra mitts, which are my fingerless mitts, my own pattern with like a little bit of color work. And I was wearing my um, woven scarf, the first woven thing I ever made. And then my Telvinen. This is the Talvinen, right? I think so. <laughs> Goldfish memory. Uh, by Caitlin Hunter, which I knit in Biche et Bouche Le Petit Lambs Wool, which was gifted to me. And it's an amazing, amazing sweater. It's very thin, but really warm. And the colors, I really, really like the colors. Burnt orange, a dark green, and like a beige worked really well together. So that is what I'm wearing. And 
I have stuck with the shorter sleeves. I have not made them longer. Um, so for now, I am happy with this. Um, also, a cropped bottom. The color work on top is as in pattern though, um, but it's, I think there's supposed to be more on the body, but I'm really happy with it. And it's, it's warm. Okay. So that is my woolly outfit of the day. I will put some footage at the end of the episode of just me exploring my neighborhood um, on a rare sunny day. And let's get into what I have finished since last time. And I will get my notes out so I can tell you all about it. So I finished a sweater for Nelly, which is also a swatch for my version or Matisse's version. Haven't decided just yet, but I finished this. This is the Camellia sweater by Sumin. I believe it's a Korean pattern. I used Rauma Fino in the color 0486. That's the green. Um, so 0486. And then the yellow is 4125. And the red is 4132. And a little bit of black is the 0410. So. I made two-year-old size, uh, but I made the sleeves longer by one more color work repetition here of the yellow and longer cuffs. The same with the body, one more and longer brim. And still with those modifications, making both the body and sleeves longer, I only used two balls of the green Rama Finel, whereas the pattern told me I needed three for this size. So. Definitely very generous um, yardage in the pattern. Now I did use a different yarn, but that means I used um, 300 meters of the main color to make a longer two-year-old size. So whatever scraps I have left of this, I can use either in a version for an adult, myself or Matias. Or I can put it into my garter blanket, which I'm working on in Rama Fino as well. If you saw the last episode, I was speaking about how I was alternating the pattern because I, or I, I'm altering, altering the pattern for the adult size because all the little flowers in this one <laughs> are different. Um, so you see this flower and the flower below is not the same and this and this is not the same. So basically this entire sweater is charted um, and you can't memorize it. So um, a repeat of just two flowers is 28 stitches. That's all I'm going to say. And I have chosen my two favorites and made a new chart with them so that when I do the adult size, I'm going to stick to that just to make it memorizable and easier. Um, I only have the child's patterns, which is up to 10 year old size. Uh, somebody told me that the adult version is only four sizes, um, which isn't very size inclusive. But honestly, if you make this as a swatch and you decide like me that you want to change the, the chart, to make it easier, then you could technically apply that to any top-down raglan. So I will have a look at the pattern. If the pattern uh, comes in in my size, I will still probably get it and support her because it is a beautiful design. Uh, but if it doesn't come in the size that I need, because I, I want to make one that would fit Matias as well, then I might just wing it with the different the two flowers that I have have decided to do and hope that's gonna work out so yeah my little swatch camellia sweater I think it looks really nice 
and I did wash it so it's it's softened up a bit it's gonna soften up every time I give it a soak or wash it in the machine which I do so that was a finished object since last time I don't think I have finished anything else I have been almost monogamous since the last time I podcasted in the sense that I have spent several days in a row on one project before changing it up with a different one <laughs> but I still have one two three four five whips going so let me start with what's on top maybe so this you have not seen before I have started a scarf because I wanted something simple to knit on that I can just pick up and there is really no changing the pattern. I am just knitting until I run out of yarn. And this yarn was a gift from Matthias. So he got me some yarn from a work trip. Um, and of course, as a knitter, what I have to do is cast on immediately and nurture this trait, which is him getting me yarn. So he got me this beautiful brown yarn from Madrid. It's an alpaca blend. There's a little bit of acrylic in it as well, but he, I mean, he doesn't know what the different fibers are. It's very soft. He liked the color. And he got me four balls of it. It's the um, Merino Classic. Okay, so it's not alpaca, it's Merino. Merino Classic Best Basics by Katya, 100% you. And he got me four balls of this, thinking that I could either make something for Nelly or, you know, whatever I would want to make. This is the color 68. And it's a nice toned down brown. Is that how you could describe it? Um, like a taupey brown? Is that a thing? Color? So, I cast on, and I am still on my first ball of yarn. So, I am hoping that um, once I finish the first ball, I'm going to see, you know, multiply the length and see how the entire length is going to be. As long as it's long enough to get around the neck once and down on the other side, or like just a little bit of length then it's going to be great and i i think we're going to get there with this amount of yarn i am knitting on five millimeter needles and i cast on 91 stitches and this is a very simple uh <laughs> stitch pattern if you want to do the same it looks like ribbing but there is no purling involved it's knit stitches and slip stitches so on, if you cast on a stitch count multiple that you can divide by seven, it's gonna work. So the first three stitches I knit and then I slip one with yarn in front. Knit three, slip one with yarn in front. I do that throughout the whole row and I end with knitting three. Then on the other side, when I'm knitting back, I, I knit the edge stitch and then I slip one with yarn in front, knit three. Slip one with yarn in front, knit three. I do that until um, the last two stitches, which is then I slip one with yarn in front and knit one. And I don't like when the edge is a garter edge, which you can see the first row here has a little garter bump, but I couldn't be bothered to go back. So what I do is the first stitch, instead of knitting it, I slip it um, purl wise with yarn in front and then I yeah I think yes so I knit it does that make sense yeah I think so there's many ways to get a nice edge stitch but yeah I, I slip the first stitch instead of knitting it and that works out nicely so yes, I think it's a nice width for a scarf because I don't like thin scarves. I find them useless in Norway. It's really cold here. 
So I do want, if, if the scarf is going to be around the neck, I want some volume, kind of, right? So when it's one time around the neck, even with this width, it's still going to give quite a lot of fabric here, which is going to be nice. And I also think it looks really flattering. It's unisex. And the idea is that both me and Matthias could wear this. We have very similar coloring. And I think it's going to look really nice inside like a khaki um, coat, jacket thingy. So yes, that is a whip. And I've actually been putting little stitch markers or row, what do you call these? Progress keepers. So I knit one evening this much, the next evening this much, and last evening this much. So I've been knitting on this for three days after work. And I feel like, you know, it doesn't look like that much, but there's not that many hours of knitting involved, just three evenings and almost one skein done. So, and this is not something that needs to be done at any point. I'm just enjoying the simplicity out of it. And knowing that there is no point in time where I need to change something up is quite relaxing in a way. So yeah, that is a whip. And then I need to have a little bit of coffee. Next whip that I can show you. I'll just grab whatever is on top here. So, speaking about the realm of Finnell, I have been making all of these squares that if you've, if you've been here for a while, you will have seen all of these garter squares. I have been knitting 30 stitches, 30 garter bumps on, I think it's 3.5 millimeters or 3.75. I can check because I do have it in my row, my little book somewhere. Yeah, this is the Telvinen, by the way, I found it in my notes. So the square blanket 3.75 millimeter needles is what I've used for these. And I've just used a ton of different earthy toned uh, Rauma Fino squares. These are not even all the colors that I have, but I did pick out some squares to make a mini version of the blanket for Nelly. And then at a later time, I can either build onto that and make it a king size blanket or just have two blankets, a small one and a large one, which will just involve a few more squares. This really is the perfect knit to have with you as a portable knit, because if you bring one 50 gram ball of yarn and the needles, you can get five and a half squares, I think, out of that, and it takes no space. You can have it in your pocket even. So I really like it. It's great for car knitting as well because I don't really have to look because it's just knitting back and forth. Just for the counting of the garter bumps, I will need some light to see. Uh, so it's a really nice long-term whip. And I've been putting off doing the edgings and kind of combining them all because I wasn't sure how I was going to do it. But I will link in the description box below the two um, YouTube videos that I used or ended up using. So I have, now it's a little bit um, wavy still, but these have not been blocked. So when I do block them, the, the sides here are gonna look really nice and neat. Uh, I am using Rauma Fino for crocheting a single crochet border around the edges and I have done actually quite a few in an evening so all of these have gotten the little edgings done and some of them will be more low contrast so the lighter squares and some will be more high contrast I really like this color <laughs> so I've been doing that just single crochet around and in the corners, I do three single crochets in the corner just to have it get a nice shape. 
and that's it very simple and when i get around to where i started i take the crochet hook through the first stitch and then kind of do a slip stitch with crochet it's in the video uh, link below so yeah very simple uh quite quick i am using uh not a completely white yarn i'm using let's see i have some more squares here so these also need to be done but i did this one and i'm currently working on this one uh, this is the color that i am using for the corners it would be really nice to do this blanket with a dark yarn to combine them as well I think that would look really nice in um, an even darker gray than this, maybe. But doing the lighter version now, using the four millimeter crochet hook from Tulip, which I have all my crochet hooks now in this beautiful um, ma handmade crochet, um, what do you call it? what holds all my crochet tools and this was handmade specifically for me by the lovely knitting swan and she's just starting up her small business but she is looking to expand and right now she has a really nice like knitters project bag pouch thingy on her website very similar to the ones that petite knit comes out with in like um style and she's offering 10% off to any of you who are interested if you use the code INGA. So that's really nice. So I have now all my little crochet hooks in here. And there's also a pouch where I have my scissors and needles and stuff. So she doesn't have this in her store right now. Um, but at some point, you know, she, she will continue to update her store. And I do think I have the name of, or the number or color of the yarn that I'm using somewhere. Um, yeah, the border color that I'm using is the 4078. And the single crochet border is a video that I used from I Knit With Cat Fur and how to join the video. Uh, is a video from Crochet Delicado, which I found on Instagram, actually. And I can show you. I just tried to join two squares just to see how it would look. And it's, <laughs> I still have some ends to hide in when, when joining. But it looks like... I don't know if it's going to focus. It looks like a little knit stitch running up the center between the two squares. And the same is going to go in this direction between the squares. So I just attempted to see with two how it's going to look. So that's why there's also an extra end here. Um, but now I'm going to finish, finish doing all the borders. And then I will, instead of having so much <laughs> ends to weave in, I will join the whole way for all the rows and then the other direction as well um but yes so for each square when i'm done there really is just one end left all the other ones i have kind of carried with me when crocheting the borders so i can just cut them now and this end i will um, try and see if i can hide it in as i'm crocheting them together so that is the plan at least so yeah, that's also now, it's very portable, uh, but I do need to bring many squares with me because doing the border doesn't take very long. So that's what I have in my little bag. And the ones that I finished, I take out and leave in my living room for later, joining them all together. Put that over there. I also have another cast on that you have not seen. Christmas is around the corner and I am trying to whip out a few gifts um, for both because I like giving knits and I have knitting knit worthy family members. 
but also um, it's a nice way of not spending money I don't have by just using yarn in my stash because with knitter's math if the stash is in your or if the yarn is in your stash it's basically free <laughs> so I am using some stash yarn to make some socks and the idea is to make socks for my brothers again I don't think they watch this podcast I am using a combination of a sock yarn from Hillesvog. This is the Fjord Sockegarn 2. And it's 80% uh, Norwegian wool and it's 20% nylon. And it's 250 meters per 100 grams. So it's not a fingering weight. It's like a thick DK. DK. It's a DK. It's a DK weight. So I'm using that and I am using two different colors. So I have a beige one and a brown one. The beige is called beige. <laughs> and let's see if the brown is called brown or chocolate or something. Uh, dark brown is the brown one. So I could have just used these two together. Um, being a DK, it would knit up quite fast. But I also have some like odd, slightly like started um, silk mohair blends in my stash. This is from Yestalgarn, which is a Norwegian producer. And this, I don't know what this is. It's in my stash. I think it might be Arle. Um, they are thicker silk mohair yarns. So I am holding them together like so. And I'm knitting on four millimeter needles. So quite thick needles, 12 inch needles. And I think I have 44 stitches. So it's not a lot of stitches. I've knit a cuff and I'm just knitting the sock tube now until it's long enough and then I will do a toe and then I will cut in and do the heel at a later time when I know who's getting which sock. And the idea is to um, see how far this will get me because I think this is the limiting factor. And if it gets me two socks and I still have leftovers, I'm going to do a reverse one with this with a light um, contrasting cuff, heel and toe. If I don't have enough, I have other yarns in my stash that I can use for that. I do have some other colors in this space as well. I have more scraps of silk mohair, so it's really no science. I will make it work. And it does create a very thick and fluffy fabric right now because it's so thick, it is quite dense. But when I wash it, it softens up beautifully. And it's really nice to have on your feet when it's really cold in the winter. And because it's so thick, it's really nice to walk as well, because you have like a little bit of polstering under your feet. So that is a current Christmas knit whip going on. And as you can see, these are not the same color, but I do not mind mixing tones of color. So it's like charcoal gray and a dark brown. And it creates a very interesting color where you can't really decide if it's brown or dark gray. Um, in certain lights, you will see the slight marling. In other lights, it's just a very interesting color. So, go wild. I encourage you. Okay. Two whips left. And those are the big whips the big ones so let's uh, buckle up are you making anything by the way for Christmas if you have like a go-to thing that you make for gifts I would love to know or if you're making something really interesting right now please share I um, showed you a neckline last time I was talking about this pattern book from Rauma. Uh, this is a 
pattern book called uh, 425 where they have a bunch of patterns in their new base called Fivel. And there's a lot of good patterns in here, so I got it. I don't know where you get it in English. You could always email Rauma and ask them. But I have had some comments on Instagram of people making this that I don't think are in Norway. So I do think it should be able to get it in English somewhere. At least I hope so. Because the patterns in here are some really nice ones. Um, very in kind of designs right now. And the pattern that I am the pattern I am doing is this one. It's called the Fjärganse, but I have done um, some modifications. First of all, I am not doing this neckline. I am doing a much longer folded over turtleneck. And as you can see, the raglan here is quite wide. It's a four stitch raglan. I'm only doing a two stitch raglan. Also, it's quite a bat wing raglan in the sense that it goes quite deep underneath the armhole before you divide between the body and sleeves which makes it hard to wear jackets and you need layers when you live in a place like I do so I um so in the what I can say is in the pattern the raglan is constructed in a way that for a majority of it you're knitting um one row with increases and then one without increase so you're alternating and then at a certain point, they tell you to do increases on every round um, and then split. So what I did is I just started doing it every round. I think nine, nine times earlier, if that makes sense. So I kind of cut out nine rows where I wouldn't have done any raglan increases. That's out of the pattern, which makes... The raglan start nine rounds earlier if you have the pattern that might make sense <laughs> um and i got the stitch count from a different pattern in this book called the annie raglan which is this one and i really wanted to make this one i thought the split would be really good for both pregnant belly and for breastfeeding but it needed 14 balls and in my local yarn store they only had 10 balls so i went for the color work and then i went back to the yarn store when they had more yarn in which was then of course in a different dye lot and i got two more which i will use for just the ribbing at the bottom maybe you want to see it now so since last time i have a little bit more than a neckline because i was knitting on this quite monogamously um last weekend and the week before after recording the last episode so i had the neckline last time i have done the raglan since then i have done the body and i have done the sleeves and as you can see i'm not using the colors um, that was in the sample i am using more of an oatmeal background color and um like a maroon rust contrast <laughs> color and the sleeves they start in this section of no color work because there are sections of color work and then there are sections of no color work in between and i think if if i just look at the this is a chunky boy if i look at how it looks in the book it looks as if though for a smaller size the pattern it doesn't look that different my split is slightly higher up but i also do think that my my row gauge might be a little bit off i don't know i because i feel that the um, the color work on the body ends quite high up i would have liked it to to be a little bit like longer down and that is why also why i have not finished this and put it aside because i did finish the cuff on one arm 
I have just started the cuff on the second arm. And then I need to decide if I am going to just go into the ribbing as instructed in the pattern, or if I will make another color work repeat on the body because the sleeves has this repeat which is also the first repeat and I could do that for the body as well but I do think I will finish the cuffs on the sleeves try it on and see because I do want to make a modification when it comes to the ribbing of the body I want to make a really long ribbing which is a lot longer in the back than the front to kind of have a little bit of that split that is going on with the the Annie Raglan so we'll see but yes that is what I'm thinking um, and I could probably tell you which colors I used in case anyone wants to get their hand on some Fivel and copy the colors the the, ba the background color is the color 200, and the rusty one is the color 404. I do see that... Um, oh, and... <laughs> let me tell you also, I'm using the needle size 4.5 for the body, and it's um, 3.5 for the ribbing. And my gauge is 18 stitches, and I'm knitting the medium size. I was going to say something else, but I now have lost it. I don't remember what I was going to say. Oh, well. We'll see how this goes. But I do think it's looking quite nice. It's quite a, uh, going to be a very warm sweater, um, almost like an outer layer thing. Except in the winter when it's really cold, it's also an inside layer. <laughs> but yes. And I think it's a really nice color work design. And I am excited to have it. I do hope that the fabric relaxes a little bit with washing. I have not knit with this base before. But since it is quite a chunky yarn and then with the color work as well, it's it's feeling a little bit like it's oversized. But it's not so oversized that it's obviously oversized. So... It has a tendency when I try it down now to just make me look bigger than I am. That might also be that I'm pregnant. Um, but, you know, you know what I mean. So I feel like if it gets a little bit more flow going and relaxes a bit with washing, it's going to look even nicer. So I'm hoping for that. And yes. Last and final whip i need to get it i have been working on the miles short jacket by ozetta and i have just been knitting on the body since last time so i think the last time i podcasted it might have been up here it kind of looks like it's been resting a bit on the needles here <laughs> And uh, I have gotten to the point now where I am considering uh, starting the short rows to kind of shape the front and back. If you look at the pattern, you see that it kind of dips down in the front and dips down on the back. So the length that I have now is where I would um, start the ribbing on the side of the thighs. And I have stopped doing what the pattern says when it comes to instructions for length because I am a lot taller than the model in the photo. And I, it's knit with unspun, so I'm trying not to break it as I'm showing it to you. So right now it's hitting, like the bottom of my bum is here. So it's almost there. So I think with the ribbing, the ribbing on the side of my thigh will be where my butt stops <laughs> and then in the back it's going to cover my butt and also in the front it's going to go down a little bit on my thighs how I want it and here's the baby bone for those who wants to see <laughs> it's 
huge, which I love. I can close it with much more fabric to go. So it's going to be good for the upcoming months and also next year. It's just going to be super cozy. And let's take this off without breaking. Oh, I broke it. That's fine. I'll just spit, split, spit splice it. It's very easy to break on spun yarn. This is so soft though. This is, um, I'm using Hillesvog unspun instead of Manchelope, which is in the pattern. Uh, both of those are held uh, double-stranded in the cakes when you get them. And I'm still on my second cake of yarn. They come in 200 gram cakes. So this and huge thing is weighing less than 400 grams still. And I'm also holding it together with some tin silk mohair from Sunnisgarn just to give it a bit more strength when knitting with it, but also as a finished object, it's gonna be slightly more durable. Uh, I'm thinking especially about the shoulders and the pockets where it's more gravity and weight pulling on it. So I think I, I like doing that. It also makes it pill less. So I'm a fan of using a little bit of silk mohair with unspun yarns. And yeah, I think maybe I'll do two more rows or three more before starting shaping the bottom. We'll see. But I'm really enjoying knitting on it. It's a very soft, nice project, but it isn't portable. So that one is, a, is definitely one of those couch knits. Now, I have some acquisitions to show. Um, I didn't buy anything, but I was gifted something from a friend who came to visit. I also have a little parcel that I'm going to send out that I thought I could show you. And I did a swap. So I have received my yarn, but her yarn is not at her house yet because it was there, didn't get picked up, get sent back. And now it's on the way there again. And I also started sorting my swatches a little bit better for future reference. So I thought I was going to show that as well. But maybe the most interesting thing, and this isn't uh, yarn, this is actually a knit. So this one, this is a kufta, a Norwegian kufta called, I think, uh, Geiranger kufta, which is a really nice, very touristy place uh, to visit in Norway. It's beautiful. It's in the fjords. Um, mountain of fjords and this is a pattern which was released sometime between 1960 and the 1970 something and I went to a thrift store as I enjoy doing and they were selling this for 200 kroners which is very cheap um, for Norway because thrift stores here are expensive and they were selling it so cheap because there was a little bit of um, destruction. So on the back of this arm, on the elbow, there were some unraveled stitches and also the fabric is very thin here. So I just took some Rauma Finul that I had and I tried my best, not knowing what I'm doing, <laughs> to kind of... Um, go over the stitches, um, duplic duplicate stitch, I tried my best, over the first I kind of picked up the slipped stitches and then I went over and duplicate stitch stitched over the whole area to make it a bit more sturdy so it doesn't unravel more. At some point I might get those um, those brown leather patches or faux leather patches that people put on their elbows, I might get some of those at some point and so on to the elbows because I do see that on the other one, it's also a thinner fabric just there. I mean, if this 
kofta is 60 years old and it's gotten a lot of love and wear throughout the years then it's held up really well i do think they knit this in per Gint by sanaskarn i know a lot of people are knitting with per Gint as if it's like a new thing but it's one of the oldest yarns i think that sanaskarn has and they have existed for a very long time so if this was made in 1960 it's held up really well now when i look at this pattern because somebody helped me figure out what this was because they didn't say the Geiranger uh, Genser, which is a sweater for ch a child's size, looks exactly like this with the coloring and the just very minimal coloring on top of the sleeves, while the adult ones had a lot more going down the sleeves. And also, there is no version of it in that pattern that somebody showed me that has a v-neck. So I think this was modified by the knitter who made it back then either they made it as a sweater first because the child's size that looks like this is a child's sweater and then they they either made it as a sweater first and then converted it to a kofte or they just freestyle using the stitch pattern as a lot of norwegian knitters back then and still now do to make a v-neck kofte and the fabric is slightly felted, so at some point it probably was even bigger in size. But even as it is felted, it's like the perfect jacket. It fits really well. Like the sleeves have like the perfect amount of ease, I think, for a kofte. And I just fell in love when I took it on. I felt so snugly. I just had to get it. And now, of course my Telvinen is bunching up underneath but it's um i'm really happy i found a home for it here and fixed those little things that needed help there was also a few um of these little lie stitches on the back that had disappeared completely because as you can see on the inside here it had been pulled on um, so I did my best to try and remedy that. There is still like a little bit of slack in some of them, but the, the pattern is visible on the outside. So it's good now. But yeah, that's really fun. I do recommend if you ever go to Norway, check out the local thrift store, thrift store because a lot of the time they do have old traditional knits there and of course there's varying quality um a lot of them don't look as nice as this uh, but i was really happy with this find it's the first time i have bought something knitted for myself at a thrift store so i fixed it up gave it a good long soak and i've been wearing it a lot since because the felted fabric is just that little bit of extra warmth so i can use it as a jacket even um right now in the fall so yes that was one uh the rest of the acquisition except for well i mean i can do i can do the swatches first in case you're not here for for yarn acquisitions i got these little cardboard thingies from sestra negrena and I've been attaching them to my swatches so that I can easily look. I mean, I, I could easily look at my swatches before it well as well and just measure the gauge. And um, I have knitted on like little bumps so I know which needles I used. But even quicker now, I can look at it. It says which yarn it is, um, how many meters I have of that yarn and what the different gauges are on this watch with the different needle sizes because on this one i have done one two three different needle sizes with the same yarn so i know that this is the etrophil falkland worsted i have eight skeins of the cabernet and that's 200 meters per 100 grams and then i have three in the color avocado and the gauge on this ranges from 17 stitches to 20 stitches. 
depending on which needle. So if I find a pattern with a gauge like that, that I think would be good in this color, then I can look at this and see if I have enough yardage for it and voila, cast on. So I've done that with a lot of the swatches that I have made, which I have a lot of yarn of. So these ones I've shown, shown recently, but I also have some old swatches hanging in my knitting room. This is one of them. This is a swatch I did with Holst Super Soft for an all over cable sweater that I designed myself. Never released the pattern, I just winged it. Uh, but here I have two different swatches on three millimeters and 3.5 millimeters. And I've held the yarn double and the gauge is between 20 and 22. And the Holst Super Soft comes in a cone and it's 574 meters to 100 grams. So it's a light fingering bordering on lace, but it does fluff up a lot after washing. But as you're knitting with it, it is quite thin and there's quite a bit of spinning oil in it. So it feels stiff, but it softens up a bit with washing, but it's not super soft. So don't be fooled by the name, um, but the colors are gorgeous. So I like it. Um, I kept the Fivel one because I really like the yarn. So if I ever want to knit with it in the future, I have a swatch that gives me the info. I have a swatch with um, wool in it together with Isayer Silk Mohair. That's a 22 stitch gauge. So a lot of like petite knit patterns is 21, 22 stitches. So that's a really nice combination and I have a lot of it. I did a swatch with just one strand of the wool in it, uh, British four ply, which is one of these cones. So this is a mill in England, very affordable, good quality, 100% wool yarn. And I have quite a bit of it. So on the swatch that I have, I've swatched with three millimeters and four millimeter needles. That has given me 27 and 30 stitch gauge. The four ply is 500 meters, 200 grams, but that one as well really does, no, it's 470 meters per 100 grams. And the cone is 500 grams. It fluffs up a lot. I made the ranunculus with uh, four millimeter needles and one strand. So that was a 27 stitch gauge, which is a lot smaller than the ranunculus calls for, but it worked out great. It's very stretchy fabric, very lightweight, very warm, and I have quite a bit of colors of it. So I decided to put all the colors that I have onto this card so I can see. So I have a black, a brown, dark green, medium green, light green, a marled brown and white, then I have a maroon, rust, and then I have some different light colors, a one that's more white, one that's more gray, and one that is um, tweedy. And uh, yeah. I am thinking of maybe making a blanket using the earthy tones. I'm really feeling the earthy, earthy autumnal fall woolly wools right now. So that's something that I'm thinking about. And I also did a swatch in Rauma Finel, just because I have a lot of Rauma Finel. I really enjoy the base, both for color work, but also on its own. So I might be knitting a sweater for myself in Finel, just with like, plain simple color as well soon so I do have a swatch with that info so if I knit it on 3.5 millimeters that's a 22 stitch gauge for me I could get it down to like 20 stitches by using a four millimeter needle so it's good to know it's good to know my friend from high school visited and she has knit this adorable teddy with overalls for Nelly and it's just the most precious thing. I think that if I had the stamina 
I would make like lots of little different outfits, but he looks so cute in his little overalls. So I think he's just going to be allowed to have this as his one and only outfit. And Nellie's not going to know that this pattern that she, my friend knit from, has more outfits. <laughs> Maybe one day I, I will get around to knitting all the toys that I have been wanting to knit, but that day is not today. So I'm very honored and happy that she made me this because it's so cute. Very cute. So that is an acquisition. So then um, I have received in the post and I didn't even know this was coming. So this was a very nice surprise. Uh, John Arbin Textiles sent me their annual issue there are issue three and this is a really nice book to just read through they have some really nice articles in here they have like a little bit of like a like a crossword which i found really nice because it's all about fiber knitting and there's also patterns in this book um and there's like some fun cartoon drawings it's it's just i was very pleasantly surprised um, and I didn't know this was something they were they were sending me. They sent me a a yarn last year, their Yarnadelic base, which is beautiful if you can get your hands on it. They don't sell it anywhere here where I live, um, but I was really honored to try it last year. They sent me a skein and I made two hot water bottle covers with it. And I really was going to keep one of them for myself, but my brother liked it so much. So he got it for Christmas. But one day I'll, I'll make something more in the Yarnadelli because it's um, it was really nice to work with, really soft. And the coloring was very interesting, uh, not just heathered, but it had like many different aspects of colors in it. So it was really nice. There's a pattern in here called the um, comb wrap and blanket that I am very much considering making so it's both like a big blanket there this one also comes in a cot size and then there's also a shawl version of it and I was thinking it would be really nice to use the wool in it yarn that I have to combine colors and do like the cot size blanket but it's intarsia so i haven't quite decided if i'm ready to commit to intarsia blanket knitting at this time but definitely on my radar for a future cast on and yeah there's there's other patterns in here as well some beanies some mitts and just a lot of beautiful photos there's uh shawl as well no it's a it's a really nice book john arbin textiles the annual issue three all right now i have two last things to show I have sent some yarn in the post to someone in Canada. Uh, it's some yarn that I had in my stash that I didn't know what I was going to do with it. And she wanted it. So we decided to do a swap. I would send her that yarn and she was going to send me some other yarn. Um, and this is the yarn that she sent. I got five skeins of Julie Aslan Fino and the idea is that this is going to make a really nice uh, fade kind of I'm a little bit unsure where the green would go in the fade but if I decide to commit to a fade project that that is what I'm thinking but I am also considering um, using it for different smaller projects like baby knits because it is so soft <laughs> so the fino base from julie aslan is a 75 percent merino 15 percent cashmere and 10 percent silk 
Um, and I do not think that this is superwash. It says to hand wash it. So I got the Epinette color. The Fall River, which has a little bit of uh, speckling going on. The Blossoms, which is interesting. It's like a light gray with pink and green tones. Tonal, is that what you would call this? This is more of a solid in the Emilia color. And the light green is the Avril colorway. And I really like this color. So, yes, some beautiful yarns. These three more of solid colors and this speckled and tonal color. So I do hope she likes the yarn that she's receiving as well and that it gets there in not too long. <laughs> she also included a little gift of um, a sock yarn from her stash called Vivid Yarn Studio by Julia Stangelan. And it's a orange and green speckled base in merino and nylon the color is california roll it's dyed in canada it's beautiful sock yarn so i might this would actually be really nice to knit with now around like halloween times but i think it's also going to be really nice in the spring it also has like a little bit of pink like tulips so yes that's that the final thing i have to show you is what some of the things that I have gathered for um, a podcaster friend and Tiffany Liu or the typical bliss this is her podcast if you do not want to see what I'm sending you then see you next time this is the end of the episode but she is making something for Nelly and that is honestly the sweetest thing and she's not even making like a tiny thing she's making the Selma sleep suit by Petite Knit which I personally cannot get myself to knit because it's such a commitment so the fact that she is making that for me I have to send her a, a thank you and she is more into neutrals so I have gotten her some Norwegian woolly woolly yarn in neutrals and I put it into this bag which I'm going to put into the box when I sent it to her. So I got her some Hillesvog Tinda because she said she would like to try some Hillesvog. And Hillesvog Tinda is one of my all time, if not the all time favorite. Three skeins of 100 grams has gotten me sweaters in the past. Like I've made several sweaters with three skeins of Hillesvog Tinda. And I believe I'm quite a lot taller than Tiffany, so she should definitely be able to make like a simple raglan out of three skeins. Um, the raglans that I made before has long sleeves, cropped body, and like a crew neck, not a long neck, but maybe she can do that since she's not as tall as me. I think I, for the body, I think I need like 30 centimeters after the raglan before binding off. And that's a really good length for like my cropped length. Um, and I'm also including two uh, Rama Finel, which is enough to make most kind of accessories like hat, hats, mittens, cowls. Um, a lot of the patterns that I've designed, so like my cowls and my mitts have used Rama Finel. And the color where cows uses two, but then in two different colors. But I don't think she knits as much of color work as I do. So I gave her two in the same color so she can play around and use it together or on its own. And then I also got her a little notions pouch, which is matching with one that I got for myself. And um, in there I have like some stitch markers and uh, like a little wooden case with um I can see it on show. no it's not a wooden case it's um a cardboard case with um, 
O-rings or like stitch markers. Um, I was going to put in a wooden case with sewing needles, but it never arrived in the mail. And then also a little stone uh, stitch marker, which could also be used as like a necklace pendant thing. Um, and then we'll see. I have another thing coming that I've ordered that I want to send with it. So hopefully it gets here soon so Tiffany can get her little goodie bag from Norway. And yeah, I think that is all I have to show you. Hopefully next time I will have committed to the finishing of the Fjärgenser so I can show you. I also hope to be done with at least like the bottom part of the Miles shirt jacket. Um, I did end up getting one more ball of the tin silk mohair just because I have made it quite a lot longer. So I do think I will need more of it. The Hillesvog Unspun I do have quite a bit of, so I'm not going to run out. And I might use that extra ball for the, um, the ribbing that will be happening because it's looks the dye lot looks slightly darker to the visible eye. So I think I'm going to do that so it doesn't look weird, like halfway through a sleeve. Um, and, uh, yeah, hopefully, hopefully me and Matthias will go on a little trip. We might just go to the cabin just because hotels in Norway are insanely priced. So we might go to the cabin and see if we can go on a hike or do something, something nice together before the winter really hits. And, um, we I was hoping that we could go a bit further up north where the Rauma Mill is, but there was no hotel option that was feasible for us. So I think I think we'll be smart and not do that. And then I can indulge maybe next year with Nelly. We'll see. Anyways, I hope that you are well. I hope that you're making all the things that you like to make and that you're not getting yourself stressed out by gift knitting. Just knit what makes you happy. And I hope to see you in not too long, hopefully. And until then, happy knitting. Bye.